then state your name and affiliation before asking your question, and please direct your question to a specific student athlete. All right, we're now joined by uh, sophomore Emily Ryan and senior Ashley Jones from Iowa State University. So uh, if you have a question, please uh, raise your hand. Tommy Burge, Des Moines Register. Uh, this is for Ashley and Emily. Um, I believe over the summer or the off season, Coach Fenley, or maybe it was one of you guys, put up the score of the Texas A&M game on the scoreboard and left it on at the pr practice facility. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, Coach Fenley had the score up on the scoreboard for, during our practices and on the back of our shirts it said, remember the Alamo, and had the score on it. So just kind of a mental reminder of where we were last year and uh, kind of what we don't want to do again this year and uh, just taking that next step forward and use it as motivation. And that was during summer workouts? Yeah. How much did that motivate you guys, this is for both of you to, I guess, like you had said, not have that happen again. Let's start with Emily. Yeah, no, um, just knowing how um, close we were to winning that game last year and how um, it made us focus on what, how important the little things are. And that's something we focused on a lot this summer is that any little um, play or any little detail can change the outcome of a game. So um, having that reminder just was something that was in the back of our mind all summer and kept us motivated. Ashley, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, just kind of like what Emily said, uh, just knowing that you have to play till the very end and every little thing in the game matters. So you just have to go out, play as hard as you can, uh, really buy into the scouting report. Rob Gray, Cedar Rapids Gazette. This is for Ashley. Um, talked a lot about what it means to host these first two rounds. And I mean, and you often talk, all of you guys talk about not taking anything for granted. Just how special is that? knowing that you not only have the fan support for you guys, but these are women's basketball fans that are going to show up for probably a lot of these games, or all of them. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's really great when we get to host. We have some of the best fans in the country, so uh, just to be able to play at Hilton again and uh, get our fans in here, and I know they're excited and we're excited, so it will be a lot of fun, and we just have to uh, focus in and uh, get ready to play. Uh, Connor Ferguson, Cyclone Fanatic. Ashley, this is kind of more so for you. I know you guys draw a lot of motivation from that game uh, in San Antonio last year. Uh, if you kind of go back to 2019 when you guys hosted here uh, and lost to Missouri State in the round of 32, does that kind of uh, stay in your mind, keep the motivation of like nothing's guaranteed in this tournament? It's still a tournament at the end of the day. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, you remember uh, all the little plays and everything that happens, but you can't really uh, – dwell on it you have to continue moving on and trying to get better and so just knowing uh that you can't take any team for granted every team's going to go out and give everything they have so you just have to you have to do the same go out and compete and uh like i said focus on our scouting report and come ready to go hi guys scott rice from kcci I, I pretty much know you're going to answer this based on what you were just talking about about not looking past anybody but it's impossible for everybody else not to see greensboro lurking and possible Seahawks showdown. Have you guys caught yourself at all or anybody else on the team like, hey, let's make it and maybe see Iowa or anything like that? Or is that just so far not even in your mindset at all? I'd like to hear what both of you guys have to say. Let's go to Emily first. Yeah, no, that that's honestly not anything we're focused on at all. We're really focused on UT Arlington and preparing the best we can for them and trying to win that game. That's um, our biggest focus right now. Yeah, like Emily said, we have UT Arlington first. You can't uh, overlook them. They're a good team, so we just have to focus on that right now and get ready to play for that one. And for Emily and Ashley, what has the scout revealed about UT Arlington, what they've got, and kind of what you have to be concerned with? Let's start with Emily again. Yeah, uh, they're a really talented team. They're in the NCAA tournament for a reason. Um, they won their conference tournament easily. They didn't have any trouble. And they have their uh, conference player of the year on their team as well. So um, we're going to have to really focus and um, play our scout, uh, focus our scout team and do what we can um, to limit what they do best and see what that takes us. Have, uh, this is for either of you guys. Have you looked at um, 
Star Jacobs for UT Arlington at all. And I know uh, your game plan kind of surrounds, you know, if they got a star player that produces a lot of scoring, we're going to let them get theirs uh, and kind of focus on everyone around them. Have you guys uh, looked at how you're going to approach that? Let's go to Ashley and then Emily. Yeah, uh, we've scouted and uh, we know she's a really good player, so we just have to stay in front of her, uh, kind of limit her shots and uh, box out and rebound. I think that's the big thing. Also getting rebounds, helping us uh, get some defensive rebounds to use in our offense as well. Yeah, uh, Star Jacobs is obviously a great player. Um, like I mentioned, player of the year in their conference. So um, we know we have to focus really hard on her, but um, it's not just her either. They have a lot of solid pieces around her too. So um, we really have to focus in on each individual person and try to take away their strengths. Emily, what's this like getting to play, uh, you know, knowing that, I mean, you guys are a top 10 program, everyone's watching all season long, but I mean, this is the NCAA tournament. I mean, this is, seems like the bright lights are really shining. As a competitor, does it, I don't know, add a little more juice to you? And what's this experience going to be like, do you think? Yeah, uh, it's going to be really fun just to have the opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament. That's something you dream of um, growing up. So having this opportunity is really special and to be able to do it in front of Hilton, um, is make it makes it even more special. So um, just having this opportunity, I know as a team we're going to be focused on the task at hand, but we're going to enjoy the moment as well. Do we have any more in-person questions for the student athletes? Ashley, how has Emily's game changed from last year to this year in just terms of, I don't know, just on, on offense especially in terms of kind of getting everyone on the ball in the right spot because it's really been fun to watch her passing. Yeah, uh, Emily has done a great job. She's always in the gym trying to get better, and uh, you can really see that. Her confidence is really high right now, and she does an amazing job of uh, understanding the game, knowing when uh, she, we need to, she needs to score, when to get someone the ball at the right time. So I think uh, just watching her grow from last year to this year has been a lot of fun, and uh, it's a lot of fun playing with her. I got one more, sorry. <laughs> Ashley, is there any emotional hangover from Kansas City from uh, the way you guys lost to Texas at all entering this week, do you think? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, it's a new season, really. Uh, you got to learn from what happened in the Texas game and uh, use that to help us as we move forward, knowing that uh, when you lose, you're done, and you just have to go into the, every game like it could be your last and give it everything you have. All right, we'll now move uh, to remote. So if you are joining us remotely, please use the raise hand function if you would like to ask a question. I think that's all we have for you. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. A recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you for joining us.
Test, test. Okay. All right, just as a reminder, uh, please make sure your phone is on silent before we begin. For those joining us remotely, we'll take in-person questions first, then we'll move to Zoom. If you have a question remotely, please use the raise hand function and uh, we will call on you. Please wait for the mic holder to get to you, then state your name and affiliation before asking your question, please. Coach, how's it going? How Happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, let's get started. Uh, Coach, if you'd like to begin with an opening statement, then we'll take questions. Uh, just beyond, beyond excited to, to be in this situation. Um, it never gets old, certainly after what we've all been through the last couple of years to to be back to a normal NCAA setting. Uh, we have a lot of kids that haven't had this experience, so it's a great thing, uh, honor to host it. And certainly, last thing is, I just cannot thank the staff here enough. Um, the amount of work that they have put in and, and to have also the first four game last night, just no, no one does it better. No one does it better than Iowa State and the staff here, so I really appreciate their work and uh, uh, hopefully, uh, It'll be a great uh, weekend for all the teams that are here. All right. If you've got a question for Iowa State head coach Bill Fenley, please raise your hand. Rob Gray, Cedar Rapids Gazette. Um, Bill, we'd ask student athletes about keeping up that A&M score, I think, in the summer. Um, I know you intend that as motivation, not like, oh, gosh, you guys messed up. How, how do you feel that? And, and I know it's... Signs have been a big thing for you throughout your career. Yeah. How do you feel that was a nice way to kind of ease them into this season and get them focused on the task, long task at hand? No, I, I, I think, um, you know, with the score and the T-shirts and the signs, some teams that's, that's a reminder of a negative. I think this group, it was more of a reminder of possibilities and, and opportunities that we didn't take advantage of. Um, and I think our team understands that, and, and certainly the leadership of our team understands it. So uh, it was just one of those things that just literally we decided to try it. We asked them about it. They, they seemed very receptive, so we kind of went with it. I, I got tired of looking at it, to be honest with you, but uh, it was there all year. I could look out my window and see it for I don't know how many months. That was just for the Tommy Birch Des Moines Register. That was just for the summer workouts and everything. Yeah, we put it up there. Uh, we made T-shirts. Uh, remember the Alamo, and we put the score everywhere. And it was just a reminder during the summer. There's no one around. It's just us. It's not any fun. We started June 13th, and you're sitting there going, all this work that we're going to put in to hopefully be here today, and. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just something that just gave them a visual of, of why am I doing this every single day in June, in July, in August. Uh, and to the, our kids' credit, uh, we got to this point. No, a lot's been made about what type of matchup you, you may have with UT Arlington now that you've gotten a chance to break down the film. What are you seeing and how do you feel about the way they match up with you? Uh, you know, I think the two things right off the bat for me, they're, they're very old, like a lot of teams in this tournament. Uh, everyone's a senior except for Star Jacobs, I think it's Redshirt Jr., so they're a very mature team. And then Jacobs is a, is a handful, uh, you know, the kind of post player that we see in our league. You know, she can score it. She's in the – I think she averages 21 points a game. Shoots a ton of free throws. Uh, Coach Wright is a, has done an amazing job. Um, I'm glad the coaches don't have to play each other. That would be a mismatch. I'd get killed. Uh, but I think the way they play, they change defenses, uh, uh, switch a lot. So, not a lot of the things that we've seen in the Big 12, but, but certainly their maturity. And when you have a star caliber player, no pun intended, her name is Star Jacobs, um, you have a chance to do some big things. So uh, our kids are excited. Uh, it's, it's fun to play someone different than what you've seen in the Big 12 uh, twice a year and sometimes three times. So uh, hopefully we'll have a good day of practice today and 
stay awake till nine, nine o'clock tomorrow night. I, I, I mean, it's one o'clock and I'm like, are we ready to go yet? We still got eight hours to go. So it's, uh, yeah, that one's going to be hard. I, Emily Ryan's in bed at nine o'clock. I got to, <laughs> we got to figure something out here. <laughs> Coach Connor Ferguson, Cyclone Fanatic. Uh, speaking of Star Jacobs, I know your game plan with dynamic scorers like that is kind of you're going to let them get theirs and you're going to focus on the players around her. Have you looked at anything different from that, I guess, that deviates from a normal game plan like that for you, or I guess how are you going to attack her? No, no, we're not going to do a lot of stuff different. I think that sometimes you, as a coach or a, um, not myself, you overthink things. There's a reason we're here. And the reason we're 26 and six, and and let's not get too crazy here. But we got to be smart. I think there's a lot of things that are different. Um, the number one thing is you, the officiating could be different. You you could see people that you've never seen before. So you got to be smart. And and the number one thing that that you look at is you got to keep people off the free throw line, especially a kid like Jacobs. And we've done an amazing job over the year of, of over the years of, of not being a team that fouls people. And and those are things that you have to really um, believe in and, and practice and, and focus on that, you know, yeah, that's the way we play, but you have to reinforce that with your team. I think when you get into the postseason and uh, really, again, it goes back to our thing, embrace who you are and don't apologize for what you're not. And uh, that's what we're going to try and do tomorrow night. And I know you said you get tired of looking at that Texas A&M score from last year. Um, I kind of wanted to draw on that Missouri State game from a couple years ago. Does it kind of serve um, those two things? I know you're not going to overlook any team, and your team's not going to overlook any team. But does that serve as like a motivation and a constant reminder that anything can happen in this tournament? I, I don't know so much about the Missouri State thing. I, I think anyone who follows college basketball or sport – knows that anything can happen. That's the beauty of this event. And that's the, the March madness part. The, the madness is what this is about. And, and whether it's the men's side, the women's side, we've all seen it. We've all been a part of it. And the thing that I tell our players every year when we get into this situation is you just want to play as hard as you can, play as well as you can, so that when, obviously, at some point the season does end, you feel like you, you played the best you could play. And everyone in this tournament is going to lose except for one team at the end. We all know that. So just don't walk out of – I'm a big what-if person, you know. No what-ifs. Avoid the what-ifs in your life as much as you can. And for us, that means show up, play hard, uh, give our fans what they deserve, and, and, and we'll have a good crowd, and we appreciate that. But that's basically what we're going to be about. Andrew Harrington, Iowa State Daily. Uh, what does it mean to you and your team to be playing these games in Hilton? Oh, I think it's it's phenomenal. Um, you know, I, I think the, I, the the chance to to play at home is great. Uh, the, but I think for us, it's it's a great way to showcase our university, uh, our community, on a national stage. I, I think it says a lot about. Uh, our fan base. I think it says a lot about our team. I think it says a lot about the commitment our university and our departments made to our program, not just this year, but forever. Uh, and I think, as I said at the beginning, that's why we run these events better than anyone else. We know how to do it. Uh, we have people that are committed to it. And our players, it's fun. to. It, it, and I think the other thing, Andrew, that's, that's fun is to walk in and even though it's home, it's like you got some new furniture. You know, got some cute little signs everywhere, and there's all kinds of stuff in the locker room. And it's like, yeah, it's like when I leave town, I come home, my wife bought something else, you know, that, that uh, uh, while well, I was out recruiting for a month. But uh, it, it's a combination of both. It, it's great to be here, but it's great that it's, it's different. I don't, I don't know if I explained that right, but it's, it's, it's really, damn, this is just is so cool. I just think this is like the greatest thing ever, so sorry. It just, uh, it's, yeah, you guys know me. Go ahead. Hey, Coach Scott Rice for KCCI. And That's I agree great. with you. It's fun to see the, the food they're serving us. That's great. Here you go. <laughs> see? Exactly. See? Right. We'll take it. Uh, Whatever we can do to make you guys happy. That's <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Emily Ryan, uh, 11 assists away from the school's all-time single season record. I didn't realize she was so close. Was just I didn't either. At, yeah, looking at the game notes, and she's already had the single game record. How is she able to set her teammates up so well at such a young age? And also, what does that do for the offense? 
Uh, Emily Ryan is, is ex I've said this many times, I think if you defined, Googled, uh, whatever, point guard, it, it's a picture of her. Uh, the way she cares about her teammates, the way she understands the way we need to play, the trust that she has from her teammates, from her coaches, is amazing. And the kid just, I don't want to say the hardest, that's not fair. There's never been a player that's worked harder to be a great player than Emily Ryan. Every single morning, she's in the gym. Uh, but she's the kind of kid that you want to, you know, you know, the whole coach on the court thing. She's, she's pretty good. Pretty good. Hey, Coach Colin Cahill with WOI out of Des Moines. Um, we saw you guys play a really physical game with Texas. Is there a happy you know, medium of, that you would like that to translate over into the next game? Obviously, UTA plays a different style of basketball, mm -hmm. but is there a happy medium of what you would like to see them, uh, how that translates to the next game? Yeah, I, I, I think for us it's, it's about you know, playing the game with, with some flow, uh, you know, trying to learn to play through contact a little bit better. I thought we did it better in, this, in the game. Uh, the first two times we played Texas – uh, we did not do it, and that was my fault. Uh, I didn't have them ready to do the things we needed to do. I thought we did in the tournament. Obviously disappointed in the outcome, but I, I thought we handled it better. Um, I thought we helped each other better. Um, I thought, you know, when you play against pressure defensive teams, everyone's like, you know, well, it's the quarterback's fault. Well, someone needs to block for the quarterback. Or, you know, it's the point guard's fault. Well, someone needs to get open. You know, uh, so I thought we did a better job of that. And if we can do that tomorrow night, you're right. Arlington doesn't play that. Ex but it's still, you still got to get into your offense better. You got to have a little bit of flow. And, and I think uh, that game, hopefully, uh, even though you lost, we lost the game. Um, I, I do think we learned a lot from it. I really do. Have you noticed the success that you guys have had this season having an impact when you've gone out and recruited throughout the year? Yeah, I, I think it's helped some. Um, I, I think, to be honest with you, Tommy, I think our recruiting is uh, has been benefited because of the longevity uh, of, of our success. Our, our, you know, when you start talking about stability and the way our university embraces our program, um, the leadership of our university our community, all those things go into it. But sure, this year has given us another boost. And I think as a whole, as a university, it started with in the fall with what Coach Campbell's team and then what, what TJ's doing and what wrestling's doing. And all of that stuff just adds to, to, the, to what we can say to a pros, prospective student athlete and, and you know, their parents about this is an opportunity for you. So we've gotten a little extra certainly this year, but uh, I think it's been pretty consistent, hopefully. Any more questions in person for Coach? Yes, sir. Go ahead. You can, oh, oh, you, oh I, I don't want to break any rules here. Yeah. you got to have a microphone <laughs> and, you know, geez, got the mood lighting going on. This is, man, this is, like, cool. Nice. It's very nice. Yeah, it is uh, very nice. Um, for, I mean, you've coached for a couple of years now. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. That's very nice. <laughs> you're – is there, a, is there a type of brand of basketball that you see that comes out of the Sun Belt where UTA, I mean, are they kind of unique at all? I mean, do you, are you used to playing teams out of the Sun Belt at all and what, what style of basketball they play? No, we, we really haven't played a lot of Sun Belt teams. Uh, but I think what you see is they're very athletic. Um, uh, they, they're a lot of, they like to pressure the ball. Uh, you might have a little bit of undersized post players. But usually very skilled uh, point guard play. Uh, the, the really good teams that come out of the Sun Belt are like Troy last year, uh, you know, like UTA this year, experienced, uh, rebound the ball well. Uh, even though undersized, their guards historically are, 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 are guards that can rebound and, and, and invert their offense a little bit more. And usually they'll have, like the Milton kid, a, a dynamic point guard that can get you, get you off the bounce. Um, that seems to be the kind of teams that, that we've seen over the years. Um, and I know Troy had an amazing game against A&M last year. Uh, uh, so I, I think that even though we haven't played a lot of them, um, that's the style that, that seems to be more prevalent in that league. 
Any more questions for Coach? All right, we don't have any remote questions, so thank you, Coach, for joining us. Thank you all. Appreciate your time today. Thanks, Happy St. Patrick's Day. This press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you for joining us.